today's video I will share with you my favorite full body yoga stretching routine. This is a compilation of the different yoga postures that I find to be the most effective to release the sore muscles. I love doing it several times a week while I'm on a long hike or after having the intense exercise routine. It is also great for the whole body relaxation and creating the meditative state of mind. So let's begin. Starting in child's pose. Stretching the arms forward and releasing the back, bringing all the attention to the body and the present moment. Inhaling and exhaling deeply. Letting your forehead to rest on the mat. Trying to keep your glutes closer to the heels. Then getting on all fours, keeping the knees under your hips and the hands under your shoulders. Starting to move slowly, doing the cat cow, first hunching the back, then arching it. Repeat several times and do it at your own pace. And every exercise is better doing as long as you need to, so if you need to pause the video, do so. Once again getting back to the child's pose. Then sitting on the heels start rolling your head several times to the left and then to the right side to release the neck. Get your shoulders moving a couple of times backward. And then forward. Then get into the plank. straight in the Chaturanga Dandasana, doing a push-up with your elbows back and then arching the spine and lifting the head in the upward facing dog. Transitioning to the downward facing dog, pressing into the palms. Keep the shoulders away from your ears and keep the back straight. If it means to bend your knees a little bit, that's fine. Relax your head and the neck and slowly start moving your feet, stretching the back of the legs. Then the right leg goes up and over, leaving you in a three-legged dog. Start doing rounds with your knee to release the hip, a couple of times to one side and then to the other. Stretching the leg straight, then bend it and move forward into the plank pose, positioning the feet in between your hands. Lower the left knee down and lift the body up to feel the stretch in the front side of the left hip. Hold it for several moments. It is important to give the time for muscle to release and be gentle with it. Straightening the front leg and moving back keeping the 90 degree angle with the left knee and leaning forward to your right knee, getting the deeper stretch in the back of the leg. 
keeping your toes up, you will go even deeper. Try to keep your knees straight by going higher with the body. Then bending your right knee forward, we transition into the pigeon pose. Keeping the right toes at the left edge of the mat, the left leg lays straight and most of your body weight goes into your right outer side of the hip. First supporting yourself with the palms of your hand, then if you feel more flexible, you can go on your elbows or all the way down. This is personally my favorite pose to release the thighs and open up the hips. It even helps me to release the lower back pain. So I'd like to take my time to really go deep here and enjoy this posture. Then slowly start lifting up the body and getting into the Chaturanga Dandasana once again. You can always take it to your own level by doing the push-up on your knees and coming forward into your baby cobra with your elbows bent instead of full upward facing dog. And from there into your downward facing dog. Feel how the muscles feel the second time round and allow you to go deeper. You can move the feet and knees in this posture, whatever feels good to you. Then shifting the legs, the left leg goes up now, bending the knee. To loosen up your hip, start moving it around to one side and then to the other. Straighten the leg then move it forward in between your two hands. Letting the right knee to relax down and lifting up to stretch the front side of the right hip. Holding it there as long as it feels good. Moving backwards now and stretching the back of the left knee, keeping your knees straight and your feet straight for the deeper stretch. If you can't touch the mat with your hands, that's fine. You can start by leaning on your hip first or just completely upright, slowly making your way down. Transitioning into the pigeon pose on the other side. So left toes go to the right side and right leg lays straight. It's important to face forward with your body and keep your back leg straight and down, not shifting to the side. How far you can go with your toes depends on your flexibility level now. But don't try to rush it and if you feel the pain, step back. All we want is to stretch the body and feel good and not to be in pain, so take it slow. Coming down to the elbows if it's within your practice today. Concentrate on your body stretching and releasing the muscles. 
Feel how the soreness and pain goes away and leaves you with this pleasant sensation of warmth and elongation. Moving back to Chaturanga Dandasana, and downward facing dog. Notice how much closer you can get your heels to the mat this time around and feel the stretch through all the back side of the legs. Relax your neck and shoulders. Try to connect the navel to the hips by straightening the back. Go deeper in this posture. Then going up to a Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing dog. And once again coming to the downward facing dog. Then step or hop forward with your feet to the front of the mat. Straighten your legs and coming into the standing forward bend. You can touch the mat with your fingers or cross your hands to elongate the spine better. Make sure to always bend from the legs and not from your lumbar spine. If you need, you can bend your legs. Relax your head and shoulders and let your body weight guide you. It is a wonderful stretch for the back of the legs and releasing and elongating the back muscles. I personally love doing it every few hours during the hike, letting the back to rest after carrying the backpack. Then coming up halfway and curling the back vertebrae by vertebrae, coming all the way up. Stretching the arms up, gathering all the positive energy of the sky and the sun and coming with the palms to the center. Do it once again and come all the way down to forward bend. Step or hop your feet back coming into the plank pose and Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing dog. and downward facing dog again. Straighten your right leg up and come in between your hands. But this time we'll go up with the arms and body into the warrior one and then transition into the warrior two pose. Keeping your arms in one line, back straight. The front leg is at 90 degree angle, the back leg is straight and the toes facing sideways. Giving the left side of the body a stretch, leaning with your right arm on your right hip and stretching the left arm over your head. Then coming into the reverse warrior, keeping your left arm at your left hip and stretching the body in reverse direction. Then shifting your body weight to the right and getting into the triangle pose. Keeping the both knees straight, front foot facing forward, back foot facing side. 
extending the arms wide and the lower hand can touch your foot, knee or hip depending on your flexibility level. This pose not only provides the deep stretch for your legs, but also open up the chest and shoulders and even can reduce the lower back pain, so it is very beneficial. Coming back to your warrior 2 pose and getting down with your hands to the mat into the high lunge and twisting to the right side, reaching your right hand up to the sky and keeping your left hand down. It is another great stretch for the back. Get your right arm back down and come into the plank. Chaturanga Dandasana Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Step a hop forward to your hands and come into the standing forward bend with the shoulder opener. The fingers are interlaced behind the body, the palms are together, arms and elbows are straight. The shoulder blades rotate towards each other as the hands move forward and away from the back. Bend your legs if needed. Another wonderful stretch with all the benefits of the previous forward bend but adding the shoulder opener as well. Disconnecting the hands and coming up halfway. Then coming all the way up, stretching the arms long and coming to the center. Then drop your hands down, step a hop back with your feet. Chaturanga Dandasana, Upward Facing Dog and Downward Facing Dog one last time. Now repeat on the other side. The left leg comes up Step in between your hands and get into the warrior one stretching your arms up to the sky. Then transitioning into the warrior two. Stretching the right side of the body. Then coming into the reverse warrior, stretching the opposite side of the body. Coming back to the warrior 2, shifting your weight to the left and get into the triangle pose. Keeping your arms in line, back straight, both feet on the ground and legs straight. Back to the warrior 2 pose, coming down with the palms of the hands to the high lunge and twisting to the left side, reaching your left hand up to the sky and keeping your right hand down. Getting back to the high lunge into Chaturanga Dandasana, then upward facing dog, and coming into your child's pose, resting your head and neck on the mat and relaxing the back.
We transition onto your back now, getting into the seated head to knee fold. Relax your feet by pointing and flexing them and rolling them around. your legs straight and maintain the straight back as well. The feet can be pointed or flexed, but you get a deeper hamstring stretch by flexing the feet. Then start leaning forward towards your toes, but always remember to stretch from the hips, not the lumbar spine. Also try not curling your back too much, but rather direct your navel to touch the front of your hips, keeping the crown of your head pointing upwards and your tailbone backwards in the opposite direction. So this way you will keep your back as straight as possible. And the shoulders should be the last to come down. This is a very common pose, so take your time with it. Now coming all the way down to the mat, your knees with the arms and start massaging the back by moving the knees around. baby pose by taking big toes or outside edge of your feet with your hands and pointing the knees towards the ground. Press your tailbone down into the ground, press the heels up and pull back with the arms. Try to get the back and whole spine flat to the ground. Let the legs open wide. It is a great hip opener that lengthens and realigns the spine. You can move from side to side if it feels good to you. Then straightening the legs and going up and over the head with the feet. Lift your legs to 90 degrees and pause there. Then lift your butt and use your abs to bring your feet up and over your head until your toes touch the floor behind your head. Keep your legs straight. Arms are laying straight behind you to support and balance the weight. You can bend your knees and bring them to the floor on the either side of your head have a deeper stretch. This pose stretches the shoulders, your back, hamstrings and calves. I like to come out of this pose doing a candle, supporting the lower spine with your hands and stretching the legs all the way up, aiming to touch the sky with your toes. For me this is also a very relaxing pose and I like to leave it to the end of my practice. Hold it for 20-25 seconds. out, going back to the previous pose, touching the ground with the toes. Release your arms, lift your feet and roll the spine one vertebra at a time, slowly down to your mat. Hug your legs once again. Doing another gentle twist for the spine. Keep the knees bent and drop them to the right as you turn your head to the left. Now 
now switching sides. Twist relief pressure in the lower back and encourage spinal range of motion. I like to do this twist in the mornings and in the evenings while I'm still laying in my bed. Finishing the practice, lie with the soles of your feet touching, knees dropping down to the sides. You can keep your arms by your side or stretch your hands above your head, whatever feels best. This posture is great for settling your mind and help you unwind. Breathe deeply. At this moment you can set your intention for the day, if it's the morning time or to get into the peaceful calming mood if it's the night. Alternatively, you can do the Shivasana posture, extending the legs and arms to the sides and relax the body completely. Now take your knees to the side and roll over into the fetal position. Then come on up into your seated position with your feet crossed. Keeping your back straight, give yourself a big nice stretch extending the arms up reaching the arms up to the sky and gathering all the light, fresh, positive energy and bring it over to yourself. Thank you for joining me here for this stretching routine. Let me know what stretching routine you prefer in the comments below the video. Hope that you enjoy this practice and if so, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more hiking and backpacking inspiration. Follow us on social media like Facebook and Instagram to always stay in touch. Hope you have a good rest of your day and looking forward to seeing you again.